tonight's BCPH budget study session. Um, as per tradition, we ha will have we'll start with a few remarks from our director of the Office of Financial Management, Ramona Farino, who will give us a brief update on the state of the county and budget guidance from the county. Thank you for joining us, Ramona, and thank you for all your support in putting things together for tonight to get to this point. Um, and that will be followed by a little bit of a deeper dive into BCPH's um, draft budget. Um, at this point in the year, it is still draft, and um, we know that things shift between now and the end of the year, but we have worked really hard to, um, to get things together and be as accurate as we can and be, give you a much deeper dive this year than we have been working for me previously. So um, thanks to everybody who contributed to that process, and I look forward to the conversation. Ramona, I'm happy for you to take it over. All right, thanks, Lexi. And um, sort of nice to see everyone. You're tiny there on, and <laughs> wish I could be there with you today. I'm, I'm out of town today, so thanks for letting me um, join virtually. I want to try to give you a whole lot of information in under 15 minutes. So um, if I talk too fast, uh, let me know. But I want to, I want to, like uh, Lexi said, give you the state of the county and what we're looking at for budget this year. But I, you know, I want to keep it brief, not to interrupt on your time. So 15 minutes or less. So uh, I want to start with the budget instructions that were given to the Board of County Commissioners, as well as all our elected officials and department heads um, back in May. And I'm happy to send the memo out to you. The only reason I, I hesitate is this has greatly changed quick, quicker than it ever has really almost in my entire, well, probably my entire career here, which has been a really long time in the last two months because things have changed at the state level. So uh, happy to send it out to you, but, you know, be aware that some of the numbers in here, um, you know, really are outdated already. But um, the biggest thing, of course, is our property taxes. That's what funds our general fund, as well as some other um, areas as well, but mainly, you know, funds our general fund and that's our biggest source of revenue. And that's where um, the revenue that we send um, you folks at public health, that's where the majority of it comes from. I know you get sustainability tax from us as well. That's a sales tax, but the majority of your funding is coming from our, our general fund, which is property tax. So in the memo, it references Senate, Senate bill 23B-001, not that you should know that number. That was last year's Senate bill that um, reduced um, assessed values, if you might recall or not, by $55,000 per residential home. Um, it, it, it'll affect us in the future. Not, it really didn't affect us too much last year or it wouldn't affect us too much this year because we have a 5.5 cap. Um, and with, with growth of the county, we still felt like we were gonna just hit that 5.5 cap just like we did in every other year. So we were thinking it was gonna be really status quo. That's what the memo says, same as last year. But since then, if you've been watching any of the news, we have a whole lot of confusion right now. So I'm I'm not gonna go deeply into these proposals because they're changing daily and it takes a lot of studying almost every day to keep up with this. But there's ballot in issue 50, ballot initiative 50, there's ballot in issue 101, and there's also a, um, a special ses session proposal because counties and other districts like us have been fighting back a little at so much, so many initiatives and how are we going to survive so many cuts. So I'm just going to give you a brief, very brief overview of what they each are. So ballot initiative 50, which is still out there potentially to be on the ballot, um, it will it would constitutionally, so forever, um, bring us down to a 4% annual cap on total statewide property tax revenues. So it's not just the county, that's even like your little fire districts, that's all districts. So our assessor's concerned about that one because if you're, for example, your fire district voted to increase um, property taxes through levy. So, you know, property owners voted for something like that because they needed a new fire truck, for example, that would still be shut down by this initiative if it's more than 4% growth. So there's a lot of concern about that. Um, for us, too, because we're at 5.5, would bring us down to 4. Um, so there's concerns there. And then we have ballot initiative 108, which brings down the residential assessment rate to 5.7. So we're bringing that down um, some more percentage points there. Uh, and then there is the special session proposal, which is very, very hard to understand. It's basically a compromise between both of those. And I don't even really want to say much about it because I'm still studying that one. That's pretty new. It actually changed this week. But long story short, I uh, don't expect you to remember those numbers or anything like that. But if ballot initiative 50, 
the four, you know, reducing us to 4% went into effect, we would see on top of what we lost a little bit last year, um, another 4.6 million in 2025 would be coming off the top of our revenue that we received. That's not, to be honest with you, that's not a huge amount when you're talking about a half a billion dollar budget. Of course, that's not all general fund. However, it's the cumulative effect because it goes on forever. So by 2029, we will have lost $50 million um, and then it goes on from there. So that's the that's 50. Ballot Initiative 101 has a very small effect, only um, like $200,000 in 2025. However, that one also, over time, 43.8 million we estimate for the county. If both initiatives, because they could both be on the ballot, if both initial initiatives are on there, we're looking, you know, at, you know, by 2020. Nine, like 169,000, 169 million. So again, I don't expect you to remember the numbers. I'm just trying to go over the initiatives are really holding us back right now and making any sort of um, budget projections on what we're going to do next year. It's going to be one of those, um, the election happens. We're probably going to have two budgets ready. Election happens, things fail, things don't. Um, it's really, the commissioners really right now are really trying to figure out where they stand on these because they also want to be you know fair to our public and they, we all understand that property taxes are high. So they understand that as well. So that's what's going on property taxes. None of that is in the me in the memo, but I just wanted to give you, you know, that quick update on a lot of unknowns with what's going to happen with our revenues next year. Um, second thing I'll talk to you very quickly about is our sales taxes. So I mentioned, um, we have the um, sustainability tax that does support your teams. Uh, we do have a new, there's only one new tax coming into effect in January. We don't have any on the ballot this year, but last year the voters voted in the affordable housing tax. So that will go into effect January 1. So that's gonna give, that, that'll give some relief to our general fund because we've been supporting um, BCHA, Boulder County Housing Authority, and um, several times the last couple of years um, to keep them solvent. Uh, it's not all going to the agency, but it will help. Uh, but that didn't increase our tax rate. We had one expire, so it was approved with another tax expiring, which was alt sentencing. So, so your sales taxes won't go up in January in Boulder County, but we do have that. So that that's um, really good good news to help us out. The not so good news is in the memo. Um, we're really concerned because the memo was written with March sales tax data, and we were down almost three and a half percent over the same time last year, which was very concerning. We've always gone up at least five percent. We were down, um, like I said, about three point five. We then we came back up a little, and month five we were up by one percent, so that's a pretty good jump back up. But then I got concerned this week because we got June numbers in and now we're only at 0.75% above last year and June is an end of a quarter when we get our big filers. So the economy, sometimes you don't see it, I think, at least I don't see it when I'm out and about, there's cars everywhere and everybody's at Costco, but, um, and everywhere else, I just use Costco as an example. But um, I think folks are, you know, tightening tightening their spending, it seems like. So I would expect, uh, we were thinking we were gonna estimate a 2% to a 3% growth, but I think it's just gonna be flat um, unless you know things turn around. But we do have to make our project projections here at the end of August. So we're looking at being flat. You know, We, we took 2% thinking that's what the um, Colorado Future Center in Colorado, they, they, they look at the Colorado's economy. They had expected to sustain growth of 2% but in Boulder County, but we're not seeing it. So. All not great news, but um, still we, you know, you know, if we're if we're flat, at least on sales taxes, it doesn't take away from anything that we've been doing, you know, for the last several years. Which we're just very used to growth at the county when it comes to sales tax. Um, and you're welcome to interrupt me too, but like I said, I'm trying to not take too much of your time. So sales taxes, property taxes. So that brings us to um what the budget goals and instructions were to the elected officials and department heads that are in this memo. Um, first thing the uh, commissioners wanted to make sure that we put in that memo is that compensation and benefits package packages for our um, all of our staff, our employees, is still their top priority, um, has been for several years, um, many, many years actually. Um, the, the leadership does really value all the folks that work so hard on all our programs. So I don't have the compensation package, but um, we have been talking about it. 
and it should be in your inboxes, at least those of you that work for the county, um, it will be released. The commissioners are going to make a decision, a public decision, actually next week. We wanted to let people know ahead of time, you know, what is the COLA going to be, the cost of living adjustments that we normally get in January lately, what's the merit going to be. Uh, and so that will be coming out next week, which I think is great because we don't want to balance the budget. In past years, years ago, years and years ago when I was here, it seemed like commissioners would balance the budget on payroll. You know, they do everything they need to do and they say, okay, how, much, how much do we have left? And then they'd create the compensation package. We no, no, no longer do it that way. We we have completely flipped it. First, it's, okay, what, what, what do we think we can afford on compensation? And then look at what's left for everything else. We wanted to make sure that we weren't balancing on our employees. So that's coming out this week. So um, you'll know that soon. Some really good news um, on the benefits, health and dental benefit. Um, our health and dental fund has a very solid fund balance. We have had a couple of great years on claims, which is wonderful, it means people are overall, um, obviously there's cases, but overall it seems like we're um, pretty healthy, healthy family, if you want to call it that. Uh, we haven't had a lot of big cases, a lot of big claims, and we have a very strong fund balance. So I can tell you um, the board will make this official next week, but I can tell you there will be no increase in premiums um, for, for health premiums next year at all. Um, and I know they're looking at some additional benefits to add to the health program without any extra cost to employees. There'll be some cost to the county, but because we have that fund balance there, um, nothing nothing coming out to employees. So that's really great news. We were really, really happy because it's not the same for our, our, our a lot of other municipalities and private sector folks. Uh, it just depends on on how you structure your plan. So that's great news. Hey, Ramona. Um, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, it's Morgan. Hi, sorry to interrupt Hi, you. Just on, on that point, because I know that BCPH is a separate entity, but our employees still have the same benefit plan. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you talk about the um, BOCC absorbing those extra costs, does that include BCPH employees or would BCPH be allocated in increased expense for our no, employees? You no, you would not be allocated because we have a separate fund for health and dental and we don't split out departments within that. Okay. Um, so no, there'd be no extra expense for you at all. That Great, thank that's you. A, that's a great thing. Yeah. Thanks. Good question, though. Uh, great question. Um, let's see. I'm almost done. Uh, let's see. So departments were um, asked to participate, or not asked, but told to participate this year with priority-based budgeting, a priority-based budgeting exercise. We hired a contractor. Their name is Resource X. And basically what we were trying, what we are trying, not we were, but we are trying to do is take a look at budgeting for equity which from a county sp standpoint, we got together and talked about this. Budgeting for equity means allocating local government resources in a way that is intended to address unfair disparities between groups of people within the community served. So there's a lot there um, to think about. So this priority-based um, budgeting exercise was looking at how many people are we serving in different areas. You know, it might be a great program. I'm making this up. I don't have a program. Uh, a great program, but we find out it's only serving 50 people and, and we're spending XYZ dollars. Is that worth it? Could we take that funding and, you know, use it elsewhere for a program that's going to benefit more people? The commissioners were very careful to make sure everybody understood when we had this conversation at an elected official department head meeting. They are not looking at this as a money generator. Um, you know, to help our fund balance or anything like that. And it's not intended at all for layoffs or anything of that effect. It's more, you know, if if, if a per, pro, person is working on this program, but this is a better program, look, looking, if it should happen, looking at skill sets of that person, um, not doing layoffs. That's not what they're talking about. And more for, you know, putting somebody in a similar position in another program. We have done the exercise. Um, I think it's more going to be year two that we really are able to use the data and maybe do some reallocations, but there's a lot to it. We're still working on it. Um, so that that was part of the instructions that we were to um, you know, look at, look at all our programs and see where they stand. Next thing on the um, instructions uh, are around your actual requests. EODH were asked that all new budget requests um, should include language that demonstrate how the requests align with Boulder County strategic priorities, which you would see on our website. So folks have been really good about doing that. You know, why are we asking for what we're asking and does it align with the county? Um, my office has been instructed and we are working on revisiting the fund balance policies, mainly the general fund. 
Um, we have a structural deficit. We cleaned it up last year for one year, but it's still there. Structural deficit, meaning our ongoing expenses are more than our ongoing revenues. Um, and we um, it's against our policy to have that. So we have to cut um, things here and there or, or basically not cut, but not approve as many budget amendments or budget uh, requests as we'd like. Uh, so there is the there is that, but then there's confusion because we do have a very finally after the flood and COVID, very strong general fund balance right now. Um, it's actually less than I thought it was going to be at the end of 2023. It's very strong though at 87 million of unassigned general fund revenue. So the fund balance is strong. But the problem is that's like your savings account. A structural deficit is like your checking account, right? So even though we have you know, excess dollars, if the expenses are more than your revenues every single month, you eventually eat out your, you know, eat away at your savings and get it to a point where it's not supporting you anymore. But it is, it is healthy. So we instructed people that, you know, with your request, if you could look more at one-time requests, and that's what a savings account's for, right? If you need something and it's a one-time request, I'm going to be honest with you, you're going to have a much better chance of having that approved by the board rather than, for example, new FTEs that are ongoing and will add to that structural deficit because we can afford one times things. We just can't afford to keep opening that gap between revenues and expenses. So everybody's been look, told to look at that very closely on what they're requesting. And I am in my office, um, I'm working with our financial advisor on what should that fund balance be? Is that too high? Is that too low? I think it actually is a little too high. You want to be putting money out into your community. Uh, but we're going to look at it from a different angle than we've done in the past. We're a triple A. And what would it take to maintain a AAA? What should our fund balance be to maintain our AAA rating in case we want to, um, you know, go out for bond as we've done in the past? And I do see a hand, but I don't know who it is. Welcome looks to like take a Wendy. question. Hey there. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? I can. Yes. Great. Right. Um, can we drill a little bit deeper on the comments you're making on the general fund? So. Uh -huh. And I'm happy, Lexi, do you want me to hold my questions? How do you guys want to structure this discussion? Because I know there's going to be a lot of questions. So and we'll I'm almost Ramona, done. I'm almost done. So either way works for me. Either yeah, way. we'll let Ramona finish up and then she can go on about her life and we'll dig into the BCPH piece. Okay, thanks. Okay. I, yeah, well, yeah, like I, I have said, a non-BCPH piece. Yes, can I ask that one? So I know, Ramona, when you uh, spoke with us last, you had shown the funding versus expenses uh, trend line for yep. the county. Mm -hmm. After a year, how do they look now? Are we still showing that the county will basically be in a deficit in, I think it was two or three years? Yes. Yes. Good answer. So basically what we did is we worked really hard last year to take that away. We didn't, um, we tried not to add it too many FTEs, uh, not a lot of ongoing expenses. So at the end, so in tw the budget for 2024 this year, um, if you look, I can send this to you. The line is like, we had we had to construct it this way. It's spot on. The expenses at, and the revenues are almost exactly the same dollar amount. I mean, that was intentional. We, when we got to that point, we said, okay, can't do it. Can't do anything else. We can't get out of policy. You know that we can't get out of policy. So. Uh, it, it opens back up. So for 2025, and again, I can send the graph to you, same one you saw last year, 2025 right now, before we knew about all the things at the state, right? So this is this is earlier data. We'd be at 258 million in expenses and 252 in 2025 for um, revenue. I think I said that the right way. So yeah, expenses 258, revenue 252. So it's not huge, but then if you see the graph, it's going to go out. Got you know, it. by 2028, we'd be 320 versus 293. So it keeps it does keep expanding. Um, so we do need to keep. Thank you. Doing and, exercises and your exercises to figure it out. Yeah. Your fund balance, Ramona, of 87 million. So that's like over a 30 something percent fund balance. Is that? On a signed fund balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on a signed fund balance. OK. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. So again, you know, that may I, be yeah. too high. Yeah, so I guess in the, the county doesn't have a policy, it sounds like, for what you... It does. It, it, does. it does. It does. We have a minimum fund balance, but we don't have a oh. maximum fund balance. You don't have... Okay. Yeah, and, max, and that's what we want to figure out. Should we have a maximum fund balance so we can put more into the community? Um, which I totally agree with, by the way. We should be putting money to work, right? These taxpayer yeah. dollars. However, yeah. 
what I would say is let's put it to work, but not on ongoing expenses, right? Because you're going to expand your deficit again on ongoing. You'll eventually be eating into your fund balance every single year. So it's more, what can we put out in the community? You know, one-time programs, what do we, you know, is there software that we have to buy that we've been putting off? One-time expenses would be the way to, to get that fund balance down, but still be helping our community. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, thank you. And yeah. I, I'm sure you know that we as a Board of Health set a range for our fund balance a couple months ago between 15 and 20 percent, which is a new policy for us, mm -hmm. too, um, is yeah. what our goal, goal for fund balance is. Yeah, and like and unlike you right now, we don't have the top. So that's why I pulled in uh -huh. DA Davidson as our financial advisor. And I wanted to be sure I didn't pull it down too low because then you could lose your triple A. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of not great things about that, right? Um so yeah, so that more to come on that. And I um I should have information for the commissioners. We have a meeting with them early September. So we'll have that soon. We'll have that soon. But I do agree. We need to make sure that we're not holding too much. For comparison, just so you know, we had um 65 million unassigned fund balance when the flood happened and within two years <laughs> we were way almost below our minimum so mm -hmm. unfortunately that's the other side of it He's when you know i will tell you that fires like you know the, the fires unfortunate fires we just had um last month they do not hit us hard that's hard to believe but because the state declares a state of emergency, the state actually works for, with FEMA. And so they pay the bills up, you know, we pay, we're probably only gonna pay about $500,000 on these fires. The state actually bears the brunt of it and then they get reimbursed by FEMA at the federal level, but that's just fires. Um, so we get the COVID, you know, that one hit us hard, the COVID pandemic, and then of course the flood. The flood brought us down to very dangerous levels and brought our road bridge fund negative actually. And then the general fund was supporting the road and bridge. So it was, so there's that fine line of how much is too much and how much is safe. I will tell you, um, I fought for a disaster um, fund as well, which basically is just siphoning off general fund money. Um, it's deceiving if you look in our financials. You know, it says we have 14 million there. However, we really don't. We only have 5 million. Uh, 14 million, most of that is residue sales tax that expired. We had a sales tax for the flood, but we took out debt. So the majority of that is being held to pay off debt as it comes due. So, uh, but there is another 4.7 million on top of the general fund for disaster recovery. Um, but yeah, I appreciate that you you also put a max on yours. I think there I think it's important to have a max. I mean, you just don't want to collect taxes and and let it sit there and not help your community. Right. What, one more question for you, Ramona. Thank yeah. you for that. Mm -hmm. um, just in terms of what the county's overall projected shortfalls are going forward, and it sounds like you did a bunch of work to bring it try to bring it in line and you're recommending one time requests. But does the county have a an approach that you're putting into? how you're going to deal with projected shortfalls going forward? Right now it's year by year. Um, and it's it the rest of the, you know, the rest of the instructions that I was going to mention to addresses that in a way, like I said, number one, we'll look at one time items for now uh, more than others. And then um, for the next, if the last year and for this year, really the only thing that I'm going to put in the recommended budget. So Emily Beam, who's our budget director and myself come up with the recommended budget by state statute. We give a recommended budget to the board. And our recommendation is right now, um, the only thing in the recommended budget would be federally mandated items, um, things backed by new revenue streams. So if you've got new grants and new revenue streams like the affordable housing tax, that's different. That's a new revenue stream. Um, or supported by revenue outside the general fund, we're much more flexible with sales tax. New FTE requests this coming year um, will be considered in the recommended budget um, if they have some, you know, revenue supporting outside, you know, some new revenue. And then when we give that to the board, how that works is we give them basically, we go, here's your base budget. So we don't, you know, here's the base budget. Here's what we recommend you have to do. And from there it becomes, it's really is out of our hands in the, in in um, finance because then I'm out of my lane, right? So the lane is now up to the commissioners about 
how how much risk taking do they want to take on this structural deficit issue? Um, right now, they are very uh, overall conservative. I will tell you the elephant in the room a lot is we have the alt sentencing facility opening up in 2025 that some of you may be aware of. It was paid for, um, luckily, without any debt. We had a sales tax for it and we paid as we went. It's just about done. It should open first quarter of 2025. However, we obviously have to man the building, right? We have to anywhere, anything from, you know, um, deputies to um, custodial staff, right? We have to man the building. So if there's going to be ongoing expenses, it's going to have to be there to start. We can't have a vacant building and not use <laughs> use the building for its intended purpose. So I really can't answer your question on the strategy. Our strategy, because I'm a you know fiscal conservative when it you know when it comes to this sort of thing, because that's what I need to be doing for our taxpayers, is just keep giving these um, really austere in a way recommendations to the board. Um, it's so hard for me to answer that question with what's going on at the state level. You know, I I just don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's, you know, because a policy decision, that's what I'm trying to say. It's a policy decision. How much risk taking is the board willing to do on, you know, the, that future line? Got it. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I, I, I actually think your questions kind of summed up what I was saying, what the board's looking at for approving this year. Um, capital requests, I didn't mention those, like computer, um, building requests, and fleet. Um, they're they're being ranked. Um, if any of you know Jana Peterson, who's our county administrator, she's looking at all those together this year instead of ranking them all separate, um, ranking them all together to see what the county's commitment um, in each area should be. Um, and then we're also looking at vacancies. So any vacancies that are over a year old are being looked at. I, I do want you to be aware of that. Uh, if, if something's over a year old, it's being looked at as um, potentially not being refunded with a department, of course, being notified first um, to, to talk to why hasn't it been filled for over a year and, you know, not saying it would be taken away, but if there's not a good reason why it hasn't, you know, hasn't been filled. For example, we have 911 operator positions that are always, you know, they get filled and then they're unfilled. It's a very tough job. It's filled, it's unfilled. So it, it looks, you know, there's like more than one of them. So it keeps looking like it's vacant, but it's different people coming and going. So, you know, we need those need those folks. So um, take a look at that too, and make sure, you know, you're filling your vacancies as quickly as you can um, and not letting them sit out there more than a year. Because uh, now you could re-ask for them, but they, they could te technically, they could be removed from the budget. You would be notified, of course, but they could be removed from the budget and then you'd have to re-ask for them through an amendment process if you needed them, you know, maybe six months down the road. Um, but I think I overdid my time. I did, again, just like last year. So um, I will say just really quickly, uh, and, and maybe Lexi's already mentioned this to you all, um, September 3rd and September 5th are the budget presentations to the board. They're not really presentations this year, just so everyone knows. Presentations are being sent to the board and the times on those um, the third and the fifth are for the commissioners to ask questions. And I know public health, Lexi, I know you know this. Um, your time is on the fifth where they will be asking questions. Look, see, I don't need to do budget timeline. And the other big one that you probably have on there, uh, I'll give you the actual date. November 14th is the, what they call the budget work session day where the commissioners officially um, approve or not officially, get, the budget gets adopted in December, but they publicly announce everything they're going to approve. So thank you for letting me talk so long. I could talk about this stuff for a really long time. <laughs> it's, it's really helpful I'll, context, Rona. Thank you for joining us. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. And you know, um, I my email is out there because it's on the, you know, it's on, it's, it's in the, in the invite, of course. So call me, email me. If you have any other questions, I'm happy to chat with anybody at any time. Right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Rhonda. Okay, next we will turn to the BCPH draft budget and Desiree Pazarosian is going to take us through it. Yeah. Yep. Got it. Yeah, we want Where do you want to go? Uh, go ahead and back up to the beginning. We'll start at the, with the first slides. 
So I just wanted to give a little context um, before we start with our agenda. And it was great having Ramona give us a preview of what's coming at the county level. Um, so she mentioned that we were participating in the priority based budgeting. So that was really our focus um, earlier this year. We were trying to get them the information as we could. There were um, some glitches with how they were pulling our information. We weren't being consulted in some of that. So there were some spaces that we couldn't fully participate in this year. Um, so we're hoping next year that that will, will improve. We'll have more input. We'll know what to ask for ahead of time um, and some areas that maybe are more unique to us. So we did participate with the things that we could. For us, it didn't end up being a high value add as far as what we received back from them. Um, we can go over some of those details at a later date. It's, it, it was more uh, suggestions than any kind of hard recommendations. So when we started priority-based budgeting, one of the things that was mentioned was that this priority-based budgeting would lead into our budget. So we were under the impression that we were in this new budget system and that we were going to be using this to create our budget that we would then give to the commissioners eventually. That did not end up being the case. So uh, <laughs> we ended up really doing two versions of the budget um, and two different approaches. So um, it was mentioned that um, information was shared in May as far as what the um, preparation time would be. And I can say that I received the information the end of June. Um, and then we had about a month that we had to prepare the budget. Um, so we were given an August 2nd date where um, historically it's been November or not November, September 1st. So we asked if we could have a waiver and did it still have it on September 1st. We were told no, get something together, some sort of temporary budget to hold the spot. So we did that. We prepared a temporary budget, had it ready to load by the second. Then we were told um, that's not the amount that you're going to receive. Um, we had set the budget to be the, the 2023 ask, which we were told last year was, or this year, 2024 was a one-time exception. And then we would revert to the amount from 2023. So we were told our new base budget was 7 million. And then our HHS E1A was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 357,000. Um, so we had to kind of go back to the drawing board. Um, we were like, okay, well, this is what we prepared. Uh, we went to Lexi, shared this information with her. We're like, what can we do? How do we go about getting us back up to this budgeted amount? So we were told to create proposals. Uh, so we created three proposals and we're gonna present those to you. I'm sure you saw them in the slide deck. Um, and in the process, uh, we're still doing the budgets with our programs and our div division managers. So what you're seeing is very much real time live. Um, so those numbers are being updated by our budget analysts like today still um, because we're trying to get the most accurate information into our uploads for the county as we can. Um, so you may see some shifts that you've seen even from yesterday, and that's because these updates are still happening. Um, so I wanted to bring you the information we have because we know that these shifts are going to continue. So. This is like a point of time. So I want to set the expectation. You're seeing a snapshot and the snapshot you're seeing is yesterday and today. And that's why there's already two versions. Um, so not that the information is not going to be solid and correct, but it's it's a living document at this point. Um, we're still getting input from division managers. We're still, you know, kind of refining it around the edges. The majority of the amounts that you're seeing are correct and are solid, but we're still like, playing with people's salaries and where different line items are going to go and, and things of that nature. So a lot of words, but I wanted to kind of kind of tell you what our process has been <clears throat> to get to today. Um, and as you all know, I am currently in two positions, so we're one position short. Um, so that, of course, adds to the fun. Um, so we have pulled in- There are actually two positions short right now. Okay, what's our other position? The senior budget analyst. Well, yes. <laughs> so our senior budget analyst starts on Monday. So um, we're excited to bring her on board. What's her name? 
I got, oh we got God, permission. It was. We got oh, permission to move it up for full. Yes. <laughs> so like I said, there's a lot happening. Um, and obviously, I haven't updated Lexi that she's starting Monday. Um, so that's where we are today. We're going to present this information. We're open to questions. If, if we don't have the answers for you today, you know, as soon as possible. Um, and we'll look into, you know, what some, I know, Brooke, you already sent a list. We have some answers to some of them. I think some of them are going to be fluid. You're going to see some of those numbers probably already changed from when you were asking them. Uh, so and we will also be sure to send you the version that will go to the commissioners um, several days in advance. Yes. So that you have time to take another look at. Right. And, and I knew some of the numbers we were sending were misaligned last night, but I also knew you were waiting. Yeah. Um, so we had some areas where we had to prepare an upload. We had to pull information out and we couldn't determine which lines to adjust to make that align. So I didn't want to send, make a guess and not provide the graphs and the charts that we've historically provided, but we will send an updated version of those as we have a secured uh, budget amount. So I'm going to get going. Quick clarification. Yes. Do you go to up upload this to the county? Oh, no, and the county reviews it. Yes. And they say no, seven million is your new expectation. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so I had um I had been talking to our budget analysts, and I think Lexi had had discussions, you know, outside of, of my purview. Um, when I was told that I pushed back and said, you know, I was under the impression that that we were getting the amount from 2023. And he went back to the budget team and verified on his side. And he said, no. Um, and Lexi also checked with the commissioners. What about um, just having heard Ramona just say that they want to um, honor staff salary and benefit increases? Would they at least increase our base to reflect that so we don't have to dip further into? Yeah, the Right. I mean, like if we were sold, seven million was our budget for 2025. I and I I do feel like we need to push on that piece because if they if they want to keep us stable, that's fine. But also, if they're prioritizing staff benefit increases or cola and merit increases um, and the benefits, that then our seven million should reflect that at least with. Did that increase so typically when they um i think this is right does correct me if i'm wrong when they do the salary analyses in the fall they'll build that into the base okay so so that should be an increase from that seven million that we don't have to eat someplace else in programs i i wasn't told that because mm -hmm. i was told that our budget is being considered differently than other departments uh -huh. because of our separation yes but our staff is still county employees Yes. So we should, I, I, like, we need yeah. to push on that. That feels really important to our staff. Well, and as we get a little further right. in, you'll see that if we only have the budget, the base budget approved, yeah. it will be a problem. Yeah. Right, right. And we have other problems. I understand that. But, like, that feels like a very important thing to push back on. So I, I can tell you I looked back into our 2023 allocation um, and I will verify this because the version that I have, I just want to make sure is the correct version. But yeah, we were sitting at 7.7 um, .7 million for our <laughs> salaries in 2023. Okay. And then the total ask was more. The total ask in 23 that we were awarded from the general fund with the Genesis funds, because remember- That doesn't include the Genesis funds. Yeah. So if you add the Genesis funds in, um, and you add the operations- Right. No, was that was just- 8.99, so it's almost 9 million. And he has her hand up. Hey, Lindy. Hey, guys, can I make a request? Of course. Can we can we get a full factual walkthrough of the budget? I think we need to see the full picture. There's a lot of moving pieces. I have a lot of questions. I know a lot of us didn't have very much time to even digest the materials. I would really appreciate us like our ability as a board to be presented to you on the budget. And then we kind of hold if we can our questions because I feel like we need to kind of elevate this to what are the most strategic things we need to be talking about tonight. 
and I'm worried that we'll kind of get weedy really quickly without kind of seeing the bigger picture. And I really need help with that. Let me just go through the slides. Thanks, Reed. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's go through uh, the first slides are what you've seen historically. Um, and maybe go back one, I believe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Go forward. Sorry. Time on. You're, you're good. <laughs> so this is just showing where we are. And I've kind of, I've already spoke to this where we're sitting in mid August now. Um, we're having our work session. The department presentation to the BOC, as Ramona um, stated, is September 5th. Um, and the budget will be adopted in November. And historically, you all adopt the, the budget in December. Next. So budgeting progress update. Uh, we have three different categories here. Uh, shifting from Can historical. I I'm sorry, I just broke my own rule. Can I just ask uh, on the yes. Board of County Commissioners meeting, will the Board of Our Health be there? <clears throat> It's an open meeting. You can attend, but it is not intended to be a conversation between the Board of Health and the commissioners. Okay. Are we as a Board of Health comfortable with that? I want to just. Um, I mean, it, sure. I mean, I don't know that there's anything we can do other than that's when we learned about the changes last year, right? It was through that public meeting, so. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> or about reading, reading about it the next day. But yes, I think uh, I don't think there's anything. So the September 5th is just the presentation. presentation. They're not making any decisions that day. Got it. I think okay. we can ask at least for a courtesy heads up if they're planning to make any large changes. I think that would be helpful. So these are just some highlighting items of things that are changing um, structural shifting from historical to actual operating budgets. Um, we went back and we revisited the last two years to see where people were actually spending and where they weren't. Um, we were looking for budget padding, um, especially in areas like office supplies, um, operating supplies, noticing that those um, areas were being overstated and they weren't really being spent down. Um, which could skew the budget, um, correct and optimize staff funding sources. So making sure that um, we have our staff aligned to the funding sources we feel um, fits best with the type of job we have and the role that they have in the department. Um, procedural, we've looked at aligning phone costs, um, phone allowances with the true cost, um, updating fiscal clips and the revenues. And revised procedure for loading OpenGov to communicate a more accurate budget. So I will say that we this year have um, automated between our master budget and the OpenGov template. So if we make an update in our budget, it'll automatically update, update the template. So we don't have to go through and do that manually any longer. Um, next year, we might have an entirely different system, but um, it's been helpful for these shifts that we've made already this year. Um, that when we have changes, it's just another upload. It automatically is um, ready to uh, be pulled and uploaded. Reporting um, our quarterly budget revenue spend down report at the program levels. Um, as you all know, we're constantly working in this area to get better um, and more accurate reporting. Um, we did see some issues where there were some discrepancies between that dashboard that I shared with you all and some of the reporting and the percentages, and I communicated with the county on that um, the program office and was informed that sometimes there's transaction that, um, transactions that have started that aren't yet posted, so that's causing some of that discrepancy, and they're looking at updating our reporting so it's real time, so it'll capture even the in-process so you'll be able to look at that dashboard and look at that report and everything should align. Um, so more to come there. Um, I feel like that's an area we're always on trying, always trying to refine and make better. Um, and any questions on those items? Just to verify that the phone allowances are for business use, correct? Yes. Yep. So um, Jordan uh, Thomas has uh, has been the lead on this and has really looked at the whole process of who gets a phone. What kind of savings we get? What we're actually spending it on? 
Um, and we have a couple of different ideas going forward of like, you know, do we hold some floating phones for people who might need them on a temporary basis? Um, just trying to come up with the best fit for the department. And we've also, I know Jordan reached out to other departments to see how they were handling, like how, you know, if you have an hourly person, how do you um, handle the phone allowance? So the details as well. All right, next slide, please. All right, so um, as you can see, uh, you skipped one, Patrick. Oh, yeah, maybe sorry. this one. Oh, thank you. Um, this year, and I know this was a question um, that I'll follow up and do some more research on the state funding piece. The question was why um, was state funding what what was included in that state funding that that it was higher than the county this year, and why is the state funding still so high? Um, a couple of things that we talked about um, were the fact that ELC um, 2.2 came online. That is the federal pass through though. Um, so th there's some extensions of some uh, federal programming, but I will look into that state piece and give you some more information on that at a later time. I just need a moment to pull that information together. Uh, but it is the first time that I've seen that graph shift between the state and the county. Ready for the next. Um, the, so the other reason the state funding is the highest for BCPH and 25 is, is because the county spending is down. Yeah. yeah, but if you look at the year over year trend, it's trending up. And I can understand during COVID the trend up, but now it's going to go up. up. Yeah. So it's just like, is this a precipitous cliff? Like, is it going to So we were down? getting funds during the state for per capita specifically because of COVID and that got made permanent. So that's not an increase, but it's it was a raise. Got it. So we'll continue yeah, in the base. Got it. OK. Um, there have been a few other additional grants that have come through from the state. Um, uh, because I think because more attention is being paid to public health at the state level. Got it. But we're happy to itemize. Okay, any more questions on this slide? Can I just remind me what is included in private funding? So those those are like a community foundation or um, different more. I, I'm looking at Heather. Heather, 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 Heather has a lot of them. Can you say Colorado Health Foundation, Boulder Community Foundation donations that are uh, we have a few in Genesis and Oasis that are like legacy will directed um, funding, um, different things of that nature. So like private foundations. So Tony Gramps is one, right? Uh, Tony Gramps is, is actually that CDHS. Is that where grants are primarily housed? I'm just trying to understand, is that the grant? Thing? Yeah, they're considered grants for the most part, although there are some where like a, a very wealthy gay couple donates two thousand dollars a year to oasis and they do it through like boulder community foundation so there's stuff like that non-government well. grants not government but some of it's yeah more private yeah and i would say probably the majority of them are housed in our um uh, community health community health uh division and there's so other can, go ahead i'm sorry so can you help me understand where grant funding so it's, is that sprinkled throughout this? Yes. Yes. Analysis. Okay. Yes. And did yep. we ever get an answer on um, how much we're anticipating we would want from a longer term projection perspective as a funding source from from grant funding and an expectation around that? No, we haven't done that analysis. Um, Lindy, what we are expecting, we are bringing in CLA to help us with some analysis um, work and forecasting. We're also starting to look historically um, back across our previous few years and where, what we've pulled in for grants so we can um, start looking at whether we can start projecting trends. Um, and so also bringing in a, a, a senior budget analyst um, that has some state and other experience, maybe we'll have some other ideas there as well, um, and maybe looking at software um, as another tool. So there's a lot of, I think there's a lot that we are looking at. 
but we're not confident in any of those approaches yet because we really um, haven't gone. We don't have enough information to kind of start down that road yet. It's included in our scope of work on that third party that we're bringing in to look at some budget review. Yeah, and I, I did confirm that projections would be included in that. And are we? I I think it's a part of that. Don't we need to have a sort of alignment around what our strategy is? So to Brooke's question around state funding and whether there's a cliff coming or our reliance upon um, the two funding sources that are obviously the most significant here. Isn't there a strategic question there about whether we're we're going to strategically move to be a more grant funded organization over time? So I, I can speak to the fact that we're bringing on a grants manager. So we are um, we are investing in that area um, and making sure that we are managing uh, whatever grants we do bring in you know, effectively. Um, as far as what our goals are, um, I don't I, I can't speak to that yet. I think right now, Lindy, we're trying to see what the there's there's so much on the line in terms of whether the county is going to restore our funds or push us to a place where we need to let staff go. Um, if we can get some stability in that space, I think we will, you know, for better or worse, we will at least be able to develop a strategy from that. But our strategy would depend quite a bit on the answer to that question. Right, and and we don't, I know this is a longer conversation, Lexi, but I do want to have this conversation, which is, do we need to start to plan strategically for a more diverse funding base because of the potential uncertainty, not just for this existing discussion, but potentially for future? Right, agreed. Yeah. Okay, because I think there's, I just want to underscore, there's expenses associated with that, right? We have to like, to bring the money in, we actually have to spend the money to, we have to spend it on talent essentially to to do that and have a focus there. So um, it's, you know, it's not something that we can just do off the sides of our desk in my mind. Right, I agree. Okay. Next slide, please, Richard. All right, so here is our 2024. These are the initial estimates and the 2025. Um, as you can see, the change 24 to 25 uh, was actually a reduction of one. Um, so there have been some new positions that are included in here, but there um, also have been some positions that are um, no longer here. And so there's been some fluidity in some areas um, like family health, um, where they have some new positions for Family Connects, but I believe some other positions are no, are no longer um, listed. So it, that this, this graph is something that we've used historically. I know it doesn't give you all that information. Um, so if that's something that's desired, we can um, look at a, a way to provide that information to you. I think something else to know about this graph is this shows um, all of the historic information is what was planned at the beginning of the year. It right. doesn't show what actually happened. Yes. But the new year should show. Okay. But the okay. new and then the what's in here for 2025 is only the changes that have happened so far in 2024. That's the only thing that we've made decisions about so far. So, but it doesn't include a workforce coordinator yeah. because that was in the county ask and we're probably going to retract it. So we'll get to in a minute. It doesn't include the senior budget analyst, but it will. Um, and it doesn't include the third one was the branch manager, but it will. It hasn't been posted yet. Um, and the fourth one was a grant writer, and that's a contract position. It's not a, an FTE. Okay. So the admin finance being down by two. That's not real, is what you're saying. I'm saying that that's where we are right now. Okay. And it will change again before we get to the final budget. Okay, so it'll be minus one then when you add your budget. So I did check with Jessica on this one and she said the senior budget analyst and the grants managers are in the finance number, but there were two other positions that um, are no longer with us. Um, and we couldn't confirm uh, who those two people were because we just received this. And so we would we have to look into that and get back to you on what those two positions were. Right, but yeah. the new, so then the only new position that should be added then is the new grants manager. So the grant writer will be contract and the workforce coordinator will probably be potentially be rejected. 
Uh, and so where would the grants managers sit in here? So the grants managers included in this analysis. Yeah, the senior budget analyst and the grants manager. So that means we were we let four admin and finance go. Yeah. So that I don't know. I'd have to look into that. Okay, we'll get yeah. that. We'll yeah, get that. And, 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 and there's could be just some vacant out. positions um, currently too. It may be the big, yeah, because so we had the vacancy list of, I think, whenever we were going through the personnel funding shifts, we identified there was a lot of records that was left over. So that was one position. Right. Um, there, and I know finance had a position oh. that we that we that we didn't refill that position number. Yeah. We refilled a different position yeah. number. So, so one of the things that be. we did over the last couple of months is we went through HR had a long list of vacancies for us, most of which we didn't intend to fill. And we tried, we worked to clean that up and to say, these are inactive. These are not, we're not ever going to fill these positions. And so we ended up with a much shorter, you know, four or five at the time, I think. Um, and it may be a reflection of yes. steps and downs of those positions. That's what I'm, we'll get you. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It is. I was thinking like you presented to the commissioners, you know, and I looked at this, it jumped out to me. Well, admin finance is down by two, and then some of the requested positions, it's like, so there are they in here or not? You know what I mean? So it just, yeah, that was, it just, that one jumped out to me. Yeah. Any other questions on this slide? <clears throat> no, I mean, I mean, and we've talked about this. I think that's one thing that we have to give a compelling response to is you did not actually have to lay off anybody in 24, given the budget reductions that we received from the commission. They're well, 24 is not over, and that proposal was a proposal of people that we would lay off by the end of the year. Yeah. Okay, I, so I, I think that we just need to be able to speak to what yeah. the impact of the cuts are or what yeah. we anticipate the cuts will be because this does not show any impact. Right. So, exactly. Yeah. I just think we need to be able to answer that question. All right, next slide. Thank you. So this is the, this is the sliding question. If you look on that bottom right, it shows a $1.9 um, million dollar deficit. So, um, we had to pull some figures out, so I will get your uh, uh, a new version of this um, shared out. Once we um, get our numbers aligned again in our budget, we had to pull out some numbers to um, prepare that upload that I was mentioning earlier. Um, and now we're in the process of putting them back in. So um, this is another historic document that has been provided of year over year. Um, and showing percentage changes. Um, this was also shared with management team, so they've all they all just received it last night, like like you all did. So I know that there's already been some questions, and we've reviewed some of this information with one of the division managers already. Um, so this is a item that will um, provide some information. I just want to also. Let you know that the 2024 numbers that are listed here were at a point in time. They are not live 2024 numbers. Um, so the way these have been provided to you is that they're historic and they're not updated to um, be to date. So, um, so you'll see, for instance, last year that the deficit was 1.5 million. That was the deficit before the county cuts. Right. So if we want to change that going forward, we can change that if the slide is useful and you want to keep it. But I just wanted to kind of give that caveat to you. It's not based on actuals. It's yeah. based on approved budgets. Right. So if it, the, the 1.9 million, that is the correct projection for 20. It is not. So the, the current projection it's is 1.2. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll provide an updated version of this slide. I knew yesterday you all were waiting for this and we didn't have time to fix it, so I included it um, for better or for worse. So <laughs> next time I probably would have just left that one out and shared it later. Um, so we can go on to the next slide. Can I? Oh, can we pause first. on this slide to ask some yeah. questions? Of course. So I just want to confirm my understanding of this historically. So historically, we in 2021, our revenues, I'm sorry, our expenses exceeded our revenues. And then again, that occurred in 23, 
last year in 24, and we're proposing a budget where expenses ex exceed revenues in 25. Is that correct? Not. No, this is this is the first cut. By the time we get to the end, end of the presentation, you'll see where we'll end up. I think she's showing just as quickly, but I, there's I, been a deficit between right, the, I under, the total, I, yes, the total expenses. The, I understand we're going to get a general fund and reserves and all those things, Lexi, but I just want to understand from a pure expense revenue ratio perspective, we are putting forward a budget where we're in the red. Correct. If we're operating in a deficit that we've relied on our um, on our fund balance, um, which is funded by our reserve, um, it's coming from. And I know we're going to get to the fund balance question, but I guess what I'm trying to understand is, is it good financial practice to run a deficit and rely on general funding to support that deficit? Is that well, recommended? That, that's really a board strategy decision, right? The board has to decide if we want to dip into our general fund reserves, just like the county commissioners have to decide that too, right? Right, but I'm asking Morgan more from a financial health perspective, from an expertise perspective, do we have a viewpoint on just running an organization like this, whether that is a healthy place to be? Are you asking Desiree for a financial recommendation? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I will say that my experience has been at the county for the past 10 years and um, government is different from the private sector. Um, and especially when you are a department or a component unit of an organization, that's been um, your biggest contributor. Um, so that does change the conversation and that we're not just reliant on outside factors. Um, some things obviously have changed for us in the past year, um, so it might be a discussion to be revisit. But historically, obviously, we made it this far with this practice, and it hasn't negatively affected us to date. Um, but going forward, um, if that practice needs to change, you know, I'm all for that conversation. I'm just clarifying, though, historically, over this period of time from 19 to 25, it looks like we've been, I understand probably 21 was COVID. Um, and I'm sure we had very high unanticipated expenses relative to that event. But what I'm trying to understand is historically we, before that, it looks like we weren't doing that. And then the year after that, we weren't doing that. So there's not a clear trend here. Yeah, I, I really can't speak to the previous years. This is obviously my first year, um, you know, in, in the role that I am in, in an interim uh, role. So I think that that, uh, that will be a board decision kind of going forward. Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to remember historically, again, like prior to 2019, what, um, whether or not we were, dipping into reserves and it's probably something we can figure out which might be helpful just to have a longer term picture on that um well we can look at the reserves here already. i built mm -hmm. that that information out previously so i can uh -huh. pull that pretty easily and yeah Andrew, just to make sure I, i'm clear what you said previously did you say that the county has a practice of running expenses higher than reserves no, I didn't say that they have a practice, but I'm saying since the county is our largest funder and they have obviously funded things as, as we've come to them, that it hasn't been a decision making criteria for us to, to have a deficit if we think the county will fund certain tasks. <laughs> Ramona's coming back on. <laughs> Ramona, I'll let you speak to that because you've been around in this position longer than I have. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to um, about funding I, I i i'm a little confused by what you're saying i mean whatever the commissioners decide to um budget as a transfer over to the public health department uh public you know boulder county public health it's not coming out of a deficit i guess i'm really confused about what deficit you're talking about are you talking about your own deficit because i don't know what you say when you, the county has a policy or a procedure no, that's not true. 
you know, like I said, last year we got our structural deficit every year. We've actually never had a structural. We have a structural deficit. We see it coming. And then when we budget, we correct that structural deficit. So I'm not exactly sure what deficit you're talking about. I just want to help if I can. I'm not, you know, maybe. maybe you're, I'm just, you're, you're fine, Ramona. I believe Lindy was speaking to the structural deficit in, in public health. Um, that our expenses are exceeding our revenues and um, okay. asking if that was a common practice. And my point was at public health, you know, we have been funded by the county and mm -hmm. still have had a reserve, so it hasn't changed our practice to date. Okay, so I would say on the county side, uh, it's against county policy for us to have a structural deficit, but it is not against po county policy to use our reserves to balance budget. So, you know, we can balance our, you know, if we have, like, like I said, we have the 83 million, so we can balance our budget. So that's how we get rid of our structural deficit is starting to use our savings account. Um, so yeah, it, it's not, it's not common and usually against policy to run a structural deficit, but it is certainly okay. But, you know, in certain years when it's known what you're doing to use your fund balance, your reserves to make you right. whole, but but it can't, it's not sustainable, right? It's one I of those, you, something big yeah. happened, we got to do it this year, but it shouldn't be an ongoing, I agree with you, it shouldn't be an ongoing policy. And that's that what sense? I'm trying to understand, Ramona, is, is, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but is this, uh -huh. is this like, in terms of the, how the county does this, um, you know, it sounds like it's, it's not something that you want to be a trend, and mm -hmm. you certainly, and it's really not meant to be just sort of to continue to patch financial holes that if there's exactly. a special event or something that requires it yeah that's correct yeah everybody you know just like in your own personal life something happens and you got to use right. that savings account you know COVID happened you know whatever happens yeah but it shouldn't be an ongoing policy because eventually we all know we get in trouble with that right yeah and Wish there was an easy, the, easy dartboard, you know. <laughs> I think that's the philosophy we're working with too, Lindy. Um, as you'll see when we get to the end of the presentation, we've dealt with it. Yeah, understood. Like, see, I'm just, I'm, I'm really just trying to get the facts straight, sure, so that we understand when you get to the how you're going to fix the structural deficit, as Ramona said, uh, that I'm clear on what we want to do as a board strategically, right? So it's just helping me understand fundamentally how we close that gap and what is appropriate and what may not be appropriate, so. Great. I just have a few questions about some of the changes from the, from the different lines. Sure. Uh, so I think we've talked before, the family health increase, yes. that was mostly grant funding, right? Yeah, they have a lot of funding coming in for Family that's Connects. It's a very popular program. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I, I know we had discussed that before. Yeah. Uh, but then I noticed that SIB is going up quite a bit. Where is that increase coming So we, we looked at this, and this is just a product of the way this was built, um, just to be completely transparent with you, Brooke. Um, so the way our master budget was built, when we put in um, – the expenses for salaries, for um, admin, for SIB, for the areas where we don't have other funding sources, the practice has been to, to make that net zero and put that amount in revenue and into the expense side. So that's just what you're seeing as a reflection that our expenses have gone up in SIB, not that our revenues have increased. So that is salary expenses. Uh, okay. okay. Sorry. So the revenue is just because it's the salary. Yes. Coverage. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Salary coverage. All right. Uh, and then thought it was so. And then environmental health then is currently only the, the only department that is budgeted to cover their own ex full expenses. This is this. Did have some discrepancy. Let me just pull up my. So I would say that well, most five. programs are running what you see when you look across the, at the program level, not the divisional level, but the program level. If programs are within ten thousand um, dollars, we feel like we can absorb that. It's when they get higher than that that we start to get a little bit nervous. Um, we've got a couple of programs that are in. 25 to 40 range that we're working on right now um, in terms of how do we deal with that. But what we're trying to do is make sure each program 
is kind of less than ten thousand dollars off, and that's that's an amount that we can absorb. Follow-ups. Any other questions? All right, next slide, please. All right, this is where you will see the $1.2 million deficit in that 2025 initial estimate down on the bottom right. Um, so I did do a breakout here, um, and I do want to explain a couple lines. Um, so we have um, funding sources. Um, we have the seven million you can see on that line one, which is the county um, salary allocation, and then we have some other lines that are um, county pass-through lines, and that includes like ARPA monies that we're getting from the county, but that, that are actually partially federal. But then I left. I put it in county pass-through because the county also gets interest off of those um, amounts that they can spend as they wish. So ours are kind of a hybrid of the two. So I broke that out into its own line. So um, I um, wanted to show you the difference because that $7 million was just salaries that you see on the top. And that other um, piece is some other county monies, monies that we're getting. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that line on the bottom, the holding amount, which is the $2.1 million amount. That includes all of the um, proposals as of the date that we prepared this. Um, Lexi's going to be speaking to some other items um, that was our original will be county request. Yeah. Yep. So and then and there's an, a couple of unallocated smaller amounts built into that, but largely those are the county requests um, for funding that we don't yet have that are built into that two million dollar number. And you had a question about why are county taxes going up? Yeah. Those aren't those aren't uh, property taxes from the general fund. Those are like the sustainability tax and. Uh, okay, help B1A. Oh, I, I think what um, is reflected here also is our allocation for mosquito tax went up. And mosquito tax. Yeah, mosquito tax went up. Um, we were able to um, show that our expenses for mosquito tax is higher than what we had been receiving. So we actually went back and were able to get some money transferred to, to us from the account for some previous expenses that we had had that we hadn't been reimbursed for. So um, going forward, uh, the allocation is the higher amount there. So that's why you're seeing that. Sorry, I think you might have addressed this, but why is the holding so big? The holding is including the county proposed proposals right now because- The original it, county proposal. Yeah. So the amount that we're asking for and opened up from the county, that's above that base that they told us uh, that, we, that we had the $7.3 million. But why was it so low then in previous years? Uh, because I don't think that there was proposals. Um, so this is a new process, obviously, where we're asking for for money that outside of our base because we had a base for many years. That, um, that yeah, they, our base they, was stable until last year when they lowered it to seven million. Yeah. Okay, but so this request, this this two million though reflects your request, not the seven million they came back with. So right. the seven million is the base, and then we're asking for we asked for. Two Our original request was an additional 2.1 million that we're going to probably increase it based on the conversation we'll have in a few minutes. Is it 7 million the month? That's right. Yeah. That's, so that's the base salary. So our projected yeah. shortfall is on the low end 1.2. And if we don't figure out how to deal with, it could potentially be three Four and eight. a half. That's right. Yeah. Any other questions? And that, sorry, on the ARPA funding, is this the last year of ARPA funding coming through? No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it can go to 2026. It's the last, we, we won't receive year. any more funding, but yeah. we can have until the end of 26 to spend, to spend it. it. Yes. Okay, but, but like we shouldn't count on any additional no. ARPA revenue. It's although just although uh -huh. if there are underspent funds, uh -huh. um, I have heard that some of our programs are would possibly be looked at for funding okay. um, if there's reallocation from the county side. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Have, not, yeah, that yeah, yeah. not that we're yeah, counting yeah, on yeah. it. So just 
just don't be surprised if it happens. Sorry, to, to Ramona, did you have something to say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm on the ARPA um, Executive Advisory Board, and um, we have actually allocated with the state just about all the dollars now. So anything, the only thing that could happen is basically if another department, another office, all of a sudden came back and said, "Uh oh, we really can't spend that." So everything has been allocated. So it would only be, as you mentioned, you know, Desiree, there could be, but that would be because another department gave it, you know, is right. giving it back. And I don't foresee right. that. Okay. Sorry. And so then just to, to clarify, since this holding amount is that extra request. Yes. We could be looking at if they come back and say, no, seven million, that's flat, that's it. We would be looking at a three point three million dollar. Yes, that's, that's what I was just saying. Correct. Okay. I know I just wanted yeah, to yeah. I just wanted to know what the actual number was. Yeah, yeah. You're good. You're good. And you'll see more information that uh, Lexi will be presenting that to you. Um but I also we did break it out into several proposals um uh, with and yes. with the hope that uh if there's some that they align more with that we could possibly at least get some of their proposals through if they didn't want to find all three. Next slide. So this is the infamous budgetary dashboard. Um, so this I um, I didn't write down what day I pulled it, but it was yesterday or the day before. Um, so what this shows you, um, it's a little confusing, so I'm just going to give you a brief overview of how to read it. Um, and the O, is that OFS on there, Patrick, on the top line? I just want to make sure I speak to it correctly on um, this. Yeah, OFS. Um, OFS is really transfers from the county. Um, I know that's really intuitive, so I just wanted to <laughs> let you know what that meant. So really, um, since it means transfers, it's revenue. It's another revenue source. So OFS and RV down on the bottom are our revenue sources. Um, and then ops and personnel are pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's the OPS and the PERS are the personnel. Um, we have all appropriations just showing in that all blue under appropriation line. So that'll show those three appropriations rolled up together for those four categories. Or if you wanted to look at the appropriations separately, PH 11 is our general fund or um, our reserve, however you want to um, phrase that. Um, PH 12 is our sustainability tax um, from the county. And PH 13 is our county um, funds and our county's uh, funds spend down amounts. Is this what got us crosswise with the commissioners last year? This is the screenshot that got us. Yes. Okay. Yep. So this is something that is um, the commissioners use as a budgeting tool um, for themselves. There, there actually is a Boulder County All Funds where they can go in and look at any fund in the county and break it out this way and take a look at how the counties are, are the departments within the county are spending down their monies in these um, four categories. Um, one of the things that I will let you know is that budget that's in there was our loaded budget. We haven't yet amended our budget for 2024, so that some of those amounts will be overstated. Um, we're going to be spending, after we get through this process, we're going to start that budget am amendment for 2024 to get it to you all to approve. And then we'll do an update to that budget amount. Um, so I can't tell you what those amounts should align to right now, but we will have that for you hopefully in the next month or two. Any well, yeah, I mean, just because this is the first time I think I've looked at this yeah, of course. piece of it. So I'm just trying to understand what, yeah, what got us crosswise. So if you're looking at all the green on the far right side, this is where it looks like we are underspending funds. Is that, is that? It's where we have funds remaining. Uh -huh. But I mean, I, I just, I just, uh, the reason I'm focusing on this is because this is what you're triggered, good. right? Yeah, yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> in our fund. So I just want to understand is this what you're looking at and how are we explaining and, what's going on here? And we yeah. also have been pulling, um, you know, our reporting, our quarterly reporting and all that. And we looked across all of our grants and we're about it. As of the end of June, we were 
I think we were 55% spent down mm -hmm. on average. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're on a good trend. But that includes a chunk of reserves in that spend down. Where are the reserves right. in here? Yeah, the, the reserves aren't in here. But the 55% was based on a budget that included a plan to spend reserves. Yes, of three you're talking about the budget. The, what Lexi is speaking to is the budget column has the reserves included in it mm -hmm. because we were told to submit a balanced budget last year. Mm -hmm. um, but since we since then, we've talked to the county and they've said we can submit our our budget in an unbalanced fashion so we can see that we are um, using reserves. And so what we need to do oh, includes the reserves we're using. That's right. That's right. So yes, and that so was also need... part of the sideways because we included right. our reserves right. and then they saw our reserves in addition to right, that. Right, 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 yep. yeah. yes. So what we need to do is to resubmit our 24 budget in OpenGov without the reserves yeah. so, 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 so that you can see that overspend. Yeah, and that will come with the amendment. Okay. So that will be updated. And, and hey, Lexi, yes. it, is it a, is it a I'm trying to understand is it a is it a good thing to show an overspend? Well, we want to show that it's accurate with what we projected. If you can't right. see that we're overspending, then the commissioners may be tempted to draw the conclusion that actually okay. we didn't need the money. Yeah, but yeah. The, so on the flip side, could we all could it go the other direction where we're overspending? Well, it was an overspend that we expected at the beginning of the year to draw down reserves, exactly. given the situation we were in. And it was okay. three. I see what you're saying. Like. Twenty-four. That was overspending. Yeah, because the I think Lenny, what we're talking about is that what what the commissioners originally were looking at a year ago or less than year, six months ago, whatever it was, it looked like we were sitting on unspent funds and that's what triggered, so they say, a cut in our funding. So yeah, and I, I think to some extent we were, but now this yeah. problem of loading the reserves into OpenGov is yeah. creating a new problem. Okay. I, I think it creates an optic problem. On top. Right, and, and I think we just need to be very clear about what information they're looking at and what the implications are for our budget and so that our board also understands what That's we're looking right. at on yeah. this pitch. Right. And so this is a, um, we can provide this to you monthly. Uh, we can provide this to you however often you'd like to see it. We can show you how to log into Oracle and pull it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea, but I do think it is important for us. If this is the main this is that thing main that source. the commissioners are focused on in terms of this is the data that they look at to make funding decisions and how public health is using our funding, like we need to be seeing it also and we need to understand what the big what picture is, is. like right yeah what <laughs> what funds we are spending down what funds we're anticipating to overspend and what we will underspend spend so that we're all on the same page when they're making their decisions correct and when you see i just am going to give you just another little um decoding ring but when you see obligations um so those are commitments that we've made whether that's in a purchase order or an invoice that haven't yet gone through the system so that'll be included in the total um expenditure and Desiree, can I just understand? So, so you guys are obviously managing, and I, well, I'm making an assumption you're managing and monitoring this daily, or whatever the right frequency is. When you start to see a negative balance, what happens? So we don't monitor this daily, um, but we do um, look at this to make sure that um, where where we're expecting to see our um, our spend downs is happening, especially this year, I would say we've been more sensitive to looking at what appropriations things are coming in after um, we did the big shift at the end of last year to get things in the correct appropriation. So um, that's where we're monitoring. There's not a trigger um, in the financial system that will prevent an overspend at the organizational level. It only is at the fund level. So at our entire um, budget level that it would um, that it would stop a transaction from being processed. There's also some think... new. Go ahead. Ben. No, I'm just I'm like I I I'm worrying about this because if you look at some of these lines, like the the 162, there's a 
half a million dollar overspend relative to the budget. And so I guess we're, I'm just trying to get my mind wrap, wrapped around this, which is, is that a problem? Is that something we should be managing more tightly? Like, it, because there's some pretty big variances against the budget in certain cases. Uh, which line are you looking at, Lindy? The first, the top line is the biggest delta that I see. My eyes are not really that great anymore, Lexi said. <laughs> I hear you, mine either. Yeah. I mean, there's over, there's underages and overages, but it, it's, it's not, it's, there's a lot of vari variation relative to the budget across, whether it's positive or negative. So that's a transfer. Um, so that's a transfer coming from the county. Um, so I can look into what that, what, what is in that transaction. So that, that is revenue coming in. So that's not a problem because that means that we transfer more revenue into that than we were exposed to. So if anything, we just need to make sure between our pH 11 and pH 13 that we're getting that in there correctly. Because the majority of them will be pH 13, but there are some pH 11 that come in from like ARPA. So I think so we can make this that. dashboard clearer. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that this is going to require a little bit of training and a little mm -hmm. bit of learning, mm -hmm. I think, um, on on the system and how it how it's looking at things and I'm happy to break this down and we can we can play with it and we can drill into some of it um, and look at things um, at a later date. But uh, I think uh, let me know if you have questions and I can uh, come back to you with answers. Yeah, and this will this kind of information will be a, a key focus area for us um, over the next month as we as we work on getting 24 done and really anticipating the spend down for 25. I think what I'm asking is that we have a better grip on what is going on within this view because to Morgan's point this is what the county sees and we as a board should know if this is the if this is the important view from the county level then I think the board and I think Lexi you're planning on having regular budget conversations with the board I feel like we're on our new cadence now <laughs> But I feel like we should have an executive summary around this to say we know there's variances and this is the explanation and driving better visibility around that will be helpful. More transparency will be helpful, I think, so that it's not one big culminating conversation, but there's regular review and understanding of what's going on in this in this dashboard. Yep. yep. Thank you. Next slide. Okay, everybody most hated slides, so I'm going to take it off Desiree's shoulders. Um, <laughs> I have not found a better way to present this information. So we're going to go ahead and dive in again, and, and I will try to answer any questions you have. So our anticipated budget for 2025 is 26 million. And right now our projected general fund balance at in January is 4.5 million. That means that our 5% statutory requirement is 1.3 million. We still have the Tabor and net liability restricted funds. And that total is incorrect. It should be 1.424042. So it's a little bit off. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a little slightly more because of the Tabor and net liability. Okay, and then if we go to unrestricted, we have our committed funds, which is our annual contingency fund of 2%, 520, emergency preparedness contingency of 500, our assigned, which is the amount of reserves, amount of the general fund that we are expecting to have to spend in 2025, which is 1.21, and then that gives us remaining funds of 871, 724. Okay, so our starting reserves are 16.9%, 4.533, minus the Tabor and rent liability is 16.9, and our ending reserves after the assigned funds is 12.2. So I have, so it looks like the assigned is now changed to the incorrect value, because isn't the 1.22 that's on page three, isn't that the final? overage and now it's gone to the 1.216 that 
on the non updated it's on slide uh, the revenue and expense comparison comparison it should be the same as the 2025 uh, net on the bottom so uh, but that but do but that so that's the correct number not the 1.225 it's a practical the 1.26 Okay, and then the four million. So the beginning balance is four point five. That is minus the three million that is going into twenty twenty four. Correct. Which is to go to twenty twenty four. So we were able to um, yesterday. I spoke with Mitch, who is our big budget analyst, and I was able to get their fund balance mm -hmm. at OFM. Thanks. Um, and I was able to get their fund. Fund balance calculator. Um, so we fed our numbers into their fund balance calculator yesterday. Um, and not being able to project out for the end of this year because we don't currently have a tool for that. Um, if we spend out what we anticipate, this is what our beginning fund balance will be. For, for 20 for 2024. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are the chances that we spend more than that? The chances that we over yeah. that three, like I we think we're more likely to understand because we worked really hard to save money. Okay. Mm -hmm. My question then is also more on the next, the next uh, slide. Mm -hmm. So the restricted funds on the next slide is shown as only one hundred and twenty-four thousand. Yeah, and I should have used a different um, word than restricted. I should have called that. Unspendable because um, the 1.3 million, the 5% statutory, is part of the reserves and we can spend it. But the $124 and $42 for Tabor and rent liability, we really can't spend that. We have to just sit on it. It's more like holding. It's right, so the statutory 1.3 million is something that isn't actually restricted. We could spend that. Theoretically, you're just not supposed to unless there's, you know, a pretty serious emergency. Okay. Lexi, I'm sorry. Can you clarify what is included in the assigned $1.2 million number? That is our, our deficit for 2025. Okay, so to underscore you're just i just want to make sure i understand this that you're recommending we use the general fund to patch the whole the deficit hole not but we haven't gotten there yet this is we're kind of taking you through all of the steps okay sorry thank you next slide so i hope this is clearer now basically if you take out that 124,000 you get that 1.4 million which is 16.9% the assigned 1.2% deficit would take us to 3.1 which would leave us at 12.28% by the end of the year if we want to retain a 15% reserve we would need to cut the budget by 715,000 or raise an extra 715,000 but that is based on us getting from the county our request. Correct. Right. So it could be significantly no, more we'll than that. Just a sec. Yeah. Uh, I, I had one other, another question here. Uh, okay. And then our 15% is being calculated based on our total expenses for total revenue. Uh, it's based on our <laughs> on our budget. Total expenses. Total, total expenses. Total expenses. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. I know that we had discussed calculating it as something else. Just want to make sure. Okay. Hey, Lexi, I'm still confused. I it, what I read on this page is you're drawing down the general fund using the assigned amount of 1.2 million. It's a hypothetical, but yes, if we spent. If we spent 1.2 million from our reserves, it would take us down to 12.28%. It it does but feel I the why are you spending that money? That's what I'm trying to understand. 
Well, I mean, I, I think that that is a board decision on strategy. This is what it, we, we would have to spend to hold. But but actually, I think that's a little inaccurate because we'd have to potentially spend three and a half million We're getting to stay whole. So <laughs> I just don't think we should get caught up yet on the 1.2 because... We have we have a, a big range that we may or may not have to spend That's to right. keep the department whole. Does that make sense? If you can just bear with me for five more minutes, okay. I'll get you through it. Okay, sounds good. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> okay, so if we're just thinking about that one point two million dollar plug, um, if we spent four hundred and ten thousand, that would take our reserves to fifteen. If we also requested an additional 800,000 in county funding, um, that would cover the rest to take us to 15%. This isn't explained very well, but this is basically if we got 400,000 from our reserves and 800,000 from additional county funding, in addition to what was originally proposed at 2.1 million, then we could make up that 1.2 million. But doesn't that feel, I, I guess I'm just worried that that's, we're like, we'd be asking, I, I just feel like the actual need is way bigger than that, right? I'm just, I'm just stay with me for five okay. minutes. Okay. Okay. So let's do a drill down on the county. Uh -huh. Next slide. Okay. Next slide. Yeah. So if we, um, so this is basically what I wanted to show you was what our amount was approved in 2023 was $8.99, $9 million, basically. That was approved in 2023. If we added a 6% COLA and merit, for last for 2024 and for 2025, that would have taken us to 10.11 million. If we increase our request to nine by $800,000 to 9.89 million or 9.9 .9 million, we're still below what we would have been if they had kept our base budget where it was. And what I remember, regardless of what they're saying about the base budget, what I remember them saying is our intention is not for you to lay people off, but you have a large reserve. It's fair. But we do not any longer have a large reserve. This would make us whole. This would prevent us from laying anyone off. And it's still below the amount that we would have had if the base budget had remained the same. Sorry, so I compared to what we so then, so now, so we had, you had put in the request for 9.89. We put in a request for 9.2 originally, which was 7 plus 2 point, no, 9.1 originally, which was 7 plus 2.1. And I'm suggesting that we go ahead and increase it by another 800,000 per statutory. Right. So, so your initial request wasn't 9.89. Point. Yeah, and we don't have that reflected anywhere else in your numbers currently. Okay. Got it. We do have it reflected though in the three requests. So go to the next slide, please. So this is our urgent requests. These are all statutory positions or positions that are related to us being able to get our budgets right. Good governance. Um or set or operations related to statutory work. The next slide, and that totals 1.966 million. And these are all positions that were previously funded under county funds. And that we absorbed through our reserves last year. Okay. Yep. Okay, are any of these new positions? No. Okay, so these were all absorbed through the funding we have well the grants, the grants manager is is the new is a new position but it won't be new by the time January comes this was a position that was prioritized um, as an urgent position in our department um, it's a new, it's a new position in DCPH but it won't be that it'll be an existing position by the time January comes because it was felt that we need, we had to have this position. 
So the difference being there is if it's a new position, we have to go through a different right. request process. Right. And we could easily replace the budget analyst and the grants manager with two other positions that they previously funded. We have so many. Yeah, I, I guess I hearing what Ramona said, mm -hmm. I feel like it would behoove us to just include <laughs> okay. existing exactly. positions. We can do that. And um, yeah, I just think that that would be a better strategy for us on the ask. Got it. Okay. Next ask. So this one is our major positions. These are largely related to equity and community engagement work that we do. Um, so, and these were uh, positions that were previously funded. Um, it was partly by the community funds. I think my question on this one was just that uh, I think it says, you know, no new revenues on the horizon. Uh, so Genesis in particular doesn't have any new funding on the horizon. We are hoping that Medicaid comes through in the next year, okay. which would be it's having new grant applications out there, but it's not guaranteed. But yeah, and Medicaid we're looking into. So I think it's July 2025, the community health worker pieces kick in. So then the rest of the staff who aren't the nurse and the LCSW could start billing their visits. I just wonder, so these positions that have these been, when you've presented to the county commissioners, have these like historically been the positions that you present? So Genesis used to be funded by the county at about 150,000 specifically for Genesis, and then additional funding came through general funds for positions. Yeah, it was 157,866 that we got, and last year was the first year we did. I was trying to make the strongest request where we mean it. You know, when it's led into when it's sufficiently funded with no numbers. Things that I would question. Yeah. So we may be able to um, what we had originally proposed, and I think we could go back to it, is to split the 3.0 FTE into um, 1.5 and as an ongoing, and 1.5 as a one year to get us through to Medicaid because we think the Medicaid revenues could probably spend about half of the position. Yeah. That might be just a more convincing way to look at it. That and sounds good. Going back to what yeah. um, what Ramona was saying about looking more for one-time funds, one-time funding. Because mm -hmm. uh, I think the the slide above uh, was all. I, I wouldn't question it, um, but this one I I can see how somebody, how the county commissioners could could ask a lot of questions, but. Just, and and again, I, I think that they have shown um, that they are going to look at whether or not these are all existing positions and not take our word yeah. for it. So I think we just want yeah, to make no, sure. I think that that's what, yeah, because I, I had the notes about the budget and else. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, aren't these new? Because if it says them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I just want to make sure that whatever we send them to just the new revenues, I think it short changes the work we're doing. Like maybe it's like no new guaranteed revenue or something. Yeah, something like just to say that we are working to apply for grants. Yeah, to I, thing, not just relying on. Just that I feel like I I would question some of those if I looked at it. Mm -hmm. um, that's all. That's fair. I I can look at that a little bit more closely. Okay. And I think somewhere again, I don't know where this shows up, but somewhere we need to calculate a 6% COLA and merit increase, which is what, like, I don't know, like out of the 7 million, I don't know how much of that is salaries or if it's just, I just want to make sure that we are reflecting that we would like the commissioners to help support a COLA and merit increase with our request, even the base budget request. So if you remember at the time, if you go back to slide 
14. That 2023 County General Fund at 9 million. And then projected to 2025 to 10.11 million is with the 6% COLA merit. Yeah, yeah, right. No, I got it. But just, I guess, in our requests, I, is that a separate request? Is it a, because yeah. I'm afraid we're, that they're going to deny. I'll I'll ask Ramona for okay. clarification or if Ramona is still on, I'm happy to take that question. And on the first slide, slide three, I had this noted too. I think he had, it's the 6.5 is what the count, what we are anticipating. If this is based on a 6%. I'm sorry, where are you? Uh, if you look from the email that was sent, so the very short packet, mm -hmm. um, the intro from Desiree has a 6.5%, which is COLA plus merit. Oh, that's, yeah, so that was the information that we had most recently gotten, I think from OFA, I was told, but um, that's what they're counting on right now. But I will know next week. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, maybe in Ramon, I don't know if you're still on there, but it would be helpful to know whether or not the budget of seven million would be increased to reflect a COLA and merit increase once that uh, number is determined. And that would be a board decision. Okay. So I don't think they're making, you know, any decisions. Um right now you know it'll be between now and november um that we could get back to you on that on a on a i shouldn't say a decision on on a direction that i get so yeah i don't have an answer for that yet okay thank i mean i i guess it would be super helpful to know before november mm -hmm. just because we are going to be in a place where we're going to be scrambling right to pass our own balance budget in december Mm -hmm. so I don't, well, and I can start. I can certainly ask yeah. the question. I'm just saying yeah. that you know it's yeah you know it's it's their that's their lane. But I, I'll make a note that um, when I have my next PMI with them, that that came up at your meeting, and you'd like some information on that, some respect of timing. That that would be great, Ramon. I really appreciate okay. that because I, I think Perfect. also just emphasizing what we heard you say is that the commissioners really you know prioritize staff. Mm -hmm. They and do. We want to we want to also prioritize the public health staff as part of the county staff and it, yeah it, and i do believe they i mean i've never heard them say anything otherwise uh, i do believe that they they look at your staff as their staff as well from great. that perspective thank you. yeah yeah thank i you. made it out you bet okay and then the third ask is gonna i propose that it change substantially because i don't think we should ask for any new positions i think we should put some of our current positions on here and replace with people that have, were previously funded by county fund yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So slide 18. Slide. Okay. So what we have here is some new information on 2025 in terms of the proposal. This includes the proposal to move the counting funding request up to 9.99. Nine point nine. Nine point nine. Um and it will put us just under the historical trajectory um going forward. So um in terms of contributions for the county. And uh, is the seven million reflected anywhere? It is part of that county. No, I know, but just no. the comparison, right? right? If we yeah. just get the seven million, if we don't get anything, oh. it doesn't show that. No. Um, it, well, you can see where seven million would take right. that blue line. It would take it between the five and the ten. Lindy, how you doing? Is it making more sense? I'm digesting. Okay, that's a good sign. You know, I'm sure I'll have follow-up questions. I absolutely. Okay, let's keep going. 
Health and Human Services Fund, B1A, our base is 359. We're asking for an additional 30,000. However, I think that there is a conversation, a potential conversation here about whether the commissioners want to relook at the B1A funds, which the ballot language says that it was intended to fund public health as a significant part of the ballot language. And we currently receive less than 10% of the funds from this tax. And the rest of it goes to human services? Yes. Yeah. Do you have, um, I, I think it would be really helpful to pull out if there are positions specifically that we think would qualify for those funds. Most of our equity positions would fall into the parameters for this fund. Yeah, so I guess let's let's go ahead and say, you know, here are, here are the funds we think qualify based on the ballot language for this fund. Okay. Uh, do you have the ballot language? Uh, uh, we can pull it. find it. Yeah, I'm just curious. I couldn't find it. Because I, I, again, just in previous meetings with the commissioners on, you know, their interpretation of the S tax, for instance. I mean, I just right. think that we need to say, here's, make it as easy as possible to connect the dots on Absolutely. here. Are the positions we think would fall in line with. The ballot language. Now, I will say you, there may be, you know, it's not like the funds go unallocated, so it may be a trade off. I know that some of the funds go to the community too. Uh -huh. So politically, they may not sure. be comfortable yeah, with yeah. it, but I think it's at least worth a conversation and an awareness that they could fund us through this more. Okay. Hey, Lexi, I'm sorry. I'm going to make you go back. Um, go ahead. Can you go back to the actual general fund amount that you are proposing to request and walk me through that math? This okay. One, this slide. Slide 14. So it's 15, 16, and 17. It's those three. Mm. Yeah, I'm looking at slide 14 where you're asking for, you have a $7.0 million base. You're asking for 2.89 to cover previously funded positions and operations. Help me understand the basis for that 2.89. I'm still not following the math. So that is um, positions and operations that before we were cut to 7 million were funded by county funds. And so that's what we've been having to fund through reserves this year. And we are asking them to restore so that we don't need to let go of staff. I don't, the math is still not working for me. So is that the delta between 9.45 and 7 million? I, okay, so I'm the not. first column uh, is, so 8.99 was what was approved in 2023. Mm -hmm. If you add COLA, 6% COLA and merit, that 8.99 goes to 9.45 million. Mm -hmm. But only seven million was approved last year. Mm -hmm. For 2025, if you add six percent again for COLA and merit, it would have taken our base up to 10.11. <coughs> we're asking for 9.89, so we're actually asking for less than what our base would have been if they hadn't reduced our base to seven. Right. I still don't understand the basis for 9.89. How we came up with the number? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, looking at uh, our deficit and our previously funded county positions and operations. It is the 2.89, yeah. The deficit between what and what? 20, like, it, the math just doesn't add up. I'm, I'm still confused. Can you talk more about why the math doesn't add up? So are you talking about the delta between what would have been approved in 24, what was approved, and then a percent, a 6% COLA on top of that delta? Like, I, I, I just do not understand the math. That based on 20. You're wondering how we came up with 9.89. Is that what you're yeah. wondering? Yeah, I can't I can't calculate it. I don't know where that number is coming from. It's the seven million plus the two point eight nine that's reflected on the next couple of slides. 
slide 15, 1.9, and then slide 16, the 625, right? Is that it, what? Allows, it allows us to take that $1.2 million deficit and pay 400,000 that takes us down to 15% reserves <laughs> and raise the camp to mm -hmm. 800,000 that makes up the rest of the taking us to 15%. The way we get to 15% reserves mm -hmm. is by lowering, by spending 400,000 of our reserves or lowering our budget by 400,000 and raising the county ask 800,000, which is still under what we would have been originally if they hadn't changed our base. Okay, but so it's, it's it's this. It's go back to slide twelve, Patrick. Would you? But it's two really, point. It's two point eight million. It's not eight hundred thousand. It's two point eight. But we started at two point one. Two point one in the budget. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I. I know. But I. But but I'm saying it's two point eight million above of what they have said they're going to give us. Yes. yes. Yeah. I, so like that. I think that a big discussion that this board needs to be having is. Are we how are we going to cover it? Yeah, like what, what happens if they say no yeah. to okay. all of our subsequent requests? What happens if they say seven million is all you're getting? Then we need to have a plan for how we're going to react and also how far we are willing to dip into reserves if we are. So we are so close that. to being done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Please go to slide 20 and then 21, and then we will have this conversation. So slide 20 is the S tax request. It's uh, I think it's three thousand dollars above what it was last year, and if they cut that, then so we feel pretty comfortable that we're going to get this. Uh, How would we we'll not see. get it? Just as no. Um, <laughs> well, because there's it still debate. Very, okay, there's still debate about some things. Okay. Um, okay, so slide twenty-one, which is what you've all been dying to get to. <laughs> Scenarios if county general fund requests are not approved, it does assume that we go ahead and contribute 400,000 from our reserves to regain a, to oh, so take us to 15%. Okay. Okay. So if what's most likely not to get approved priority three, although we're going to replace it with um, existing positions that we would have to cut otherwise, um, that would only take us down to 14%. So not terribly fraught about that one, but when we get to priority two, this would impact our equity focused programs. It's about a $656,000 ask. It would take us down to 11.4% reserves in addition to our 410,000 spend. Um, and we would have to probably reduce four to six positions to get back to 15% or raise revenues, right? Priority one, if that weren't approved, so if none of these, because these are additive, right? If they don't approve, right, I was going to say this. Two, they're not, they're not going to approve three. Yes, if they don't yeah. approve one, they're not going to approve two and three. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so priority one. If they don't approve that, that would take us down to four percent reserves, and we would probably need to reorganize. And still doesn't include priorities two and three. Correct. So, so I mean, I, I think that right. So reducing fourteen to seventeen positions does that include the four and six? No, yes, no right. So, it, so it's actually. A, a larger cumulative impact. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Because the reduced four to 17 does not include the reduced four to six. Correct. It's in addition to the above. Okay. Five. And that's based on about $120,000 salary. So I, I think what we should actually have as a, another line in this is if you do not approve any of these requests, right? The, the overall impact. Is that third one? It takes us to 4%. Yeah, but also the. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're not going to know. I mean, this is what makes me very nervous is that we will not know whether or not they approve any of these until November. Okay, so here is our saving grade. Everything in the urgent request from slide 15. Will be statutory. Meaning you think that gives us an increased chance of them funding it? 
I mean, I, I wish that I could feel as confidently as you do, but I just don't. I mean, so I, I understand. I mean, I've, we've tried to kind of set it up. Right. No, I think this is the best way. I think this is the best way to present it. I think as a board, we need to be prepared for. Yeah. Then to say no. Then to say no. And then we as a board need to decide what are we comfortable with, like, in terms of dipping into our reserves. Because we would basically use the entire reserve. And if we covered everything, you would end up with about $1 million in reserve. That's right. Um, and, and we will not know until November. Is what? I mean, will we? I think we'll probably know about priority one sooner than that. We may not know about priorities two and three. Okay, I can live with that. But it would be helpful to know much sooner than that, whether or not. I mean, I think of more. Um, oh, I think so we're also going to be looking at the spend down and we're going to be watching that to, uh -huh. you know, you know feel think, a little early. Sorry, Brindy. Oh, early no, it's morning. okay. I, I finally figured out where that number comes from. Sorry, I just, I really was not understanding. I, it's, it's exact, it's this headcount. So, I, Lexi, I think it, I know this is extremely painful, um, but I think from a scenario planning perspective, we need to have a scenario where if these are statu statutorily required positions, what the offset would be from an expense perspective. And I think we need to have visibility into that as a board so that we're, avoiding continuing to either violate our reserves policy and or continue to use general fund in a way that I think we've heard is probably not a great sustainable path. So the hard conversation is, would we have to cut in other areas to make this work? I think that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. and, and we as a board, I think need some runway on that in the event that that is like a thing that has to occur which of course none of us want but um, and that's why i say if even priority one wasn't approved then we'd probably need to reorg yeah but but having some visibility into that it's extremely painful and i understand and it's it's a shame it's all in a public setting because i understand the sensitivities around all this but we should know what plan a plan b plan c looks like and yeah. and be clear on what we as a board can obviously tolerate financially versus what we can't. Perfect. I'm not a commissioner, it's just two million. I mean, it is, I, I have to say, in the, it, you know, I know we're in a public meeting and I know Ramona, you're still on the phone, but it is hard to hear that the county has an $87 million fund balance and that we are looking at some pretty drastic cuts based on a 1.9 reserve. And I understand the county has a big shortfall that they're looking at too, but but it, it does feel painful to, to see those numbers in contrast, so. Well, and the good news is you have light on the situation yeah. right here in August. Yeah. And, and you know, and I, I think, we need to continue to tighten our belts because I don't think, even if the county were to come through with funding this year, I don't think the trend is that they will continue to increase our funding given what they're looking at themselves. Um, so, you know, I think that's overall, and there's been a lot of work already to, to tighten our belts um, and to look real carefully at where we can find savings. Um, and we're just gonna have to continue to prioritize that. Well, and Morgan, that's why I'm saying just from a like, I think there's two levers you pull, obviously, the basic levers are you increase revenue or you reduce expenses. And I think we need to have a strategy, a financial strategy that assumes that the trend is going to become tighter over time. And how do we, how do we adjust to that? Right. And you can't, you have to make like multi-year decisions in this kind of context. If we're going to try to diversify our revenue base, we we have to make investments now, but those also then have to be offset. So it's it's. But if we don't start to have that conversation today, we won't be ready for that potential scenario in a few years, right? Even if we can stave it off for this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and that's really the job of this board is to give strategy direction about yeah. our fund balance, about what we want to prioritize in terms of funding. Right, and I think we've made a policy decision on reserves, so we have to sort of, I think I think as a board, we have to stick to that policy unless we decide to change it, Morgan. And then the other question is going to be how we use the general fund oh, and what's yeah. the policy around mm -hmm. that. You know, our reserves, I think we gave, it's a two-year rebuild. I think there is a provision that right. we fall below, right. as long as we have a plan. Yeah, a two-year rebuild with a plan. However, I don't think reducing your reserves to one million is going to be feasible. You'll never, no. No. It would be impossible to build it back. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're not a money-making organization. No, you'd have to entirely <laughs> through, uh, through what? taxes and fees, basically. Uh, and honestly, I think part of our saving grace this year is that we did tighten our belts pretty significantly the first half of the year and we were able to save. Um, and I think a little extra money came to us that I'm not sure we can count on in future years. Yeah, and I think yeah, I think that the commissioners will ask why headcount wasn't reduced this year. So, and we took a hit to the to the general fund to our fund balance. So, yeah, there's uh, yeah because we because we an unsustainable hit to our reserves. So, so we need to see. Some scenario planning. I guess this. Let's get down to what do we need to see from you. We need to see some scenario planning around what happens if all of the additional requests are rejected. Um, and then I don't know, board. Like, what else do you want to see scenario wise? Do you want to see like what happens if we take our reserves to twelve percent or something? I mean, what you could you could step it with the uh huh yeah the three percent. <laughs> I think it'll end up being. I think it'll be three proposals, but it'll probably be the urgent positions, the one time asks, and then the third proposal will be the moderate, which is all of the equity work. You mean the updated proposals to the county commissioners? It'll be the same amounts, but it'll just be restructured. Hey, Morgan, I think on top of what you just said, I think we need a, a well, it's not on top of it, but it's a part of the scenarios. We need a scenario where we are at 15% reserve and we have not touched the general fund. Um, and then I think we do need a policy I position. On, I, don't I don't know what that means either. Sorry, Lindy, what, what does that mean? So Lexi's proposing that we take $400,000 out of the general fund. Out of our reserve. The fund balance. The, the reserves. reserves. Yeah. So back to the earlier That's conversation like the about the general fund. What I'm worried about is we don't have a policy position on how to use the general fund. Oh, you mean for the county? So, okay, because it's if you're talking about a sustainability issue, right? Because it's yeah. a structural problem. Okay, so it would be um, taking. 400,000 and working towards sustainability. I mean, I think it has to be both. I mean, you can use reserves temporarily for a year while you plan how you're going to fix your structural problems. Yeah, but Lexi, I'm just gonna push back a little bit. I, I hear you, but that could be an answer for years and years to come. And I, I think we need to have clarity around, because Ramona made it very clear earlier, they don't like to see general funds being used persistently, right? That aren't for special cases, right? It's like drawing your bank account down. You're just using it to cover the whole. Okay, and so, I think I see what you're getting at. Yeah, so I think we need to be clear, like what is our, how are we supposed to use this fund? What's financially appropriate, right? And this year we may say it's, it's because we're in the situation we're in, 
we're going to cover $400,000, but I, I'm uncomfortable using that as sort of an ongoing security blanket. I totally get that. Yeah. I would be too. Yeah. And I think the county, I think we've gotten sort of some counsel from the county that that's also uncomfortable for the county. So we just need to be aware of that. And I think we need to be very deliberate in our decision making this year on that. And Morgan, I do think we need to have policy discussion around how we want to think about that future state. Because that then forces us to start to think about a budget where that's just not just dangling out there as a safety net for us. Because eventually you burn it out, you burn it well, down. I think I understand that we need to have those discussions, but I think that it would be a better informed discussion if we could see proposals from Lexi and Indira of how they would tackle these shortfalls. And then around that, then that can guide a policy discussion. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. And instead of us just kind of amorphously. Right. I do. I, I mean, I do think it's a little hard to build a policy around what do you dip into reserves for specifically? I mean, right. Isn't that what the board's purview purview is? And that the board in any given year has to make that decision. Yes, we're willing to dip into the reserves or not be below the 15 percent. So I don't know. I mean, we can talk. I mean, I'm certainly open to if you think that we should have some hard and fast, but any board in the future could change that, right? Based right, on what they think is. I'm not talking about reserves. I'm talking about the county fund. So the county general fund. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. I thought you were talking about the general. I think I misunderstood too. So what do you do? You mean like so, so the county fund is supposed? So let's just say there's another pandemic. <laughs> uh, I think that fund is there for those kinds of things, like big unanticipated things Picture that we need to spend that money on. Are you talking about the seven million dollar? Like not asking for. Because we're always going to ask for general funds from the county. You mean like where they're like defining they have to be spent for these specific positions? I, I'm speaking to the general fund. You, yes. you, you're, you're talking about weaning ourselves entirely off of county funding? No. No. Extra that, that we're no, you, you mean defining how it's spent. So like defining that so this I'm money... I'm referring to the general fund at 4.5 million. Uh, BCPH general fund. Correct. Okay. Oh. I think we were just calling it the wrong general thing. General fund and reserves are the same thing, right? Yep. Yes. So yeah. the reserves and the general fund are the same thing. Right. So it's so we are talking about reserves. The, the unassigned yes. is what we have. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you were, yeah. <laughs> is that... Lindy, does that make sense? You're talking the 4.5 million is, does, is reserves. Right. I, I think what I'm trying to say is the policy is around a percentage, but I think our, our policy also needs to be around how we, like the reasons we spend it, right? And, Got it. and so we can be deliberate, I think to Brooke's point, this can be a deliberate decision this year. It needs to be very explicit and documented that we decided that we wanted to spend that money to fix a hole. But, I, over the long term, I do not think that is wise. Yeah, I think that I think it's fine. I just think that any given board in any given year can change a policy based on what they think is appropriate to spend reserves on. So can I can I make a quick addition here, real quick? Yeah, I think part of what this is getting at is what we hoped would happen with priority based budgeting. Mm -hmm. It hasn't happened yet, but I'm not giving up on it because we're going to do it anyway. We're not going to do it for 25, but we will do it for 26. And it's really about what are the best investments that we are making for the community in our work. And that could be an important supplement to uh, shape with the Board of Health um, in terms of that kind of extra level of, of guidance. Can I ask just a, a general question? I know that you all have done a lot of work this year around sort of general budget cutting, like cutting all the excess spend. Is there any any option to like you know to go back through the budget and see if there's more that yep. could be cut? 
you know, 18 positions out of, you know, a few hundred, a couple hundred is a lot, kind of a lot. Um, so, yes, 10% of our workforce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, just wondering if, if there are some other things that could at least be foregone for a few years. I, I mean, I also, I, what I, I worry a little bit is that we cried wolf last year. I mm know. -hmm. And I'm very worried. And so I, I want to, I, I just want to have some sense of how sure are we about our spend down pace. So this is why we're proposing a second budget study session in October when we're going to have a lot more clarity and information yeah. to be able to show you and to show the commissioners. Uh -huh. Um, they won't have made a decision by then, but I think that's kind of the sweet spot of late enough in the year that we can create some confidence um, and early enough that we don't get caught flat through. Yeah, so we so we have to file a request for that extra those extra requests soon. Mm -hmm. Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, so let's make sure those are real tight before we send them. <laughs> in terms of the positions that are on there. And then we attach to that a note saying, you know, we're going to revisit our, you know, we're continuing to try to find savings. And we will revisit these in October with you. Yep. And and we can, you know, we can adapt as our confidence in the numbers increases. Mm -hmm. Right, and then the scenario planning will change as a result too, right? So I think, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think I need to think on the scenario planning. What scenarios? I would like to see. You have a little time. Yeah. Well, we're super excited that we were able to give you this much detail on the budget, which we've never been able to do before. And, um, Apologize for getting it to you so late, but um, we are really working super hard. Yeah, we we know that, and really just so appreciate Desiree all that you've been putting into with your start working two jobs and ask Lexi. She knows about working two jobs for long periods of time. I know, uh, <laughs> but we don't want to keep up this tradition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that is not how we want to do our savings. Oh, yeah. That's not how we want to meet our budget requirements. But yeah. really appreciate all of the hustle that has gone this <laughs> <through. laughs> Oh, see how many better gifts I just do. I want to be sure that we can advocate. Yeah. And, you know, I think for me, at least, a lot of it is having time to make sure I can go through all this, be very comfortable and confident. So if somebody does come and ask me a question, I can be appropriate. So keep, advocate. keep asking questions. So yeah. have questions. Um, and we will, we will do, you know, an update in September if we have new information. Um, That'll be after we presented to the county commissioners, so we might be able to share some of their questions or something like that. Um, and uh, and we'll uh, and we have we have a senior budget analyst starting Monday, um, and we have our town hall for two finalists for the ANF director a week from tomorrow. So things are going in the right direction. Yeah, I, I'll just say I, I really appreciate this walkthrough. It was incredibly helpful. Um, and I'm looking forward to more of the details that you guys sent and documentation. So and thanks for fielding additional questions for me as well. But um, I, I, I feel like I've been educated on what the scenario is currently and what we may be managing to. And then it'll be good to see what the optionality is as, as we get closer to a deeper understanding of where we're really going to land. Terrific. And Brooke, we will send um, an email response to you and copy the other board members to your questions. I mean, I think you answered them all. Oh, great. Except for, I, I'm still just curious about the state funding since it's continually going up. If there's any other insight on what that. Yeah, we're, we're already starting to pull it. We have, we have staff members with me. I could not find the ballot language on my own when I was looking this afternoon. So I looked also, so we may have to ask legal for that. I know, um, I know Catherine had pulled it previously, but I couldn't find yeah, it. I've seen it before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I also yeah. took notes yeah. you can compare to February. February. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think there's only, is there only two? Okay. 18? Um, 
I guess the only other question that I have remaining is to Lendy's questions about how, what's the history of BCPH uh, dipping into reserves prior to 2019. Right. right. And I just, I feel like the money was flowing for a long time. So, uh, it was but, but in 08 and 09, I'm guessing it was not. So I would be curious to see what, you want me to what happened then? Compile reserves year over year, because that'll show you the shifts. Uh, so that would be just from our audit. Well, but just, just remember that those numbers were, those were, that was what was approved. It wasn't what was actually spent. And so it, they may not be accurate. Right. And the, and the other practice, Lindy, that has changed that I, you know, this is definitely in the nearer term is that when BCPH underspent funds in the past, we would retain those mm -hmm. to spend. And so it just really didn't require us, I don't think, to dip into reserves maybe consistently because they were never flowed into reserves or maybe. That's have, we yeah. So having been here for a long time and Joe, I'm thinking about it, too. I think that also we just kept our reserves yes. much smaller. Yeah. And so instead of like my programs needing like it needing to dip into reserves, it was like, we'll give you this from the general fund yes. that was not in reserves. Right. It was like BCPH funding, agency funding. It wasn't right. sitting. I mean, technically it probably was reserves, but the, the percentages were much lower back then. Yeah. And it was like, let's not drop below seven was always what what was said. Right, right. So that money was just distributed. And and if you were sitting on unspent funds, you just roll that into your program right. the next and year. We all got prior year earnings. Yes. So right. every year I'd have a, a nice little chunk in my budget to build off to of. build and for the next year. Yeah. So I, I do think that's a, a big change a in the right in the commissioner's um policies. Yeah. And the only question other questions that didn't answer were all about funds. What are the scenarios? Yeah. I have lots of notes. So anyway, Desiree, I, in getting back to what would be helpful, I I don't know right if the numbers would tell us what we're looking for. So what I could provide you all is just the fluctuation of what our fund balance has been year over year, um, and that will give you some indication of where we were spending and where we were accumulating. Yeah, but, and the I guess the percentage of the overall budget. Okay, so it's not just the raw number but how, how that fluctuated with the percentage right. yeah because I, think our, I mean that's the other piece that's important here our budget has increased 50 percent since i started yeah. yeah and that means that our reserves have to be 50 percent higher so i feel like the first time i went through budgeting it was 11 percent yeah I, I think it was there for a long time that's what i always yeah yeah, yeah just there for a long time keep it between seven and eleven yeah, yeah. but that's only one month of Operating expenses, right? Because we yeah. said, well, that's what we yeah. yeah. But I just, I, yeah. I always, well, and that was the time when our revenues were really reliable. Yeah. And yeah, we are much more dependent on grant funding now, mm -hmm. and our stable funding is less reliable, right, at the moment. Yeah. Hopefully, it will be correct. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, I know I keep saying this point, but that's why I really think it's critical we have a strategy around how we diversify because this instability of this, you know, is just creating this concern around, around our reserves. And if we're healthy, we should have enough operating, you know, especially if something were to really happen, right? We should be able to absorb that for the public. Um, and not have to, you know, panic after one month of operating the organization. So I, I think it's really the responsible thing to do. But in order to do that, we've got to build to that future of uncertainty and make sure we've got lots of different ways in which we can drive revenue in the door. Yeah. It's not something you can do overnight. Yep. It's true. And especially just, hard for us given the restraints. Different. And that's what I'm worrying about. Um, well, really, yeah, really appreciate the board engagement on this and um, the staff work and prepping and responding. And hopefully, we'll be more prepared anyway this year to make hard decisions.
Yeah, and this is this is you know this is the beginning of the conversation. Um, we're not going to wait until December to talk to you yeah. about this again, right? Yeah. So, um, and if you you know, if you feel like we're not communicating enough, you know, you guys have no. And we do have a board subcommittee. Yeah, yeah. I think budget too. Yeah. Yeah. So terrific. Yeah. Amber. Your first budget session. <laughs> This is very, very enlightening. Um, I do appreciate all the prep work and like have benefited from all of the other board members questions. So um, I just echo what everyone else said. Same questions. I appreciate all the work that put it in, was put into this. Same here. This is Landry. I agree. Thank you, Amber. Landry. Great. Are we adjourned for the evening? I think, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. The official battle <laughs> adjournment. Thank, Thank you everyone. So much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.